Today was a big day. Why? Because I got my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K into Unreal with timecode and with Genlock. I am going to show you exactly what I did in case you want to do this. Uh, why is that important to me? Uh, well, I have a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera and when I look online, I see a lot of recommendations on very expensive stuff, at least for an indie production. Like I'm at the indie stage, I'm just experimenting with virtual production at home in a space that I've kind of cordoned off with a green screen and a vibe motion tracker. And I'm trying to see how much I can get from that. Uh, when you look online, you see, a lot of you see a lot of talk about two things in particular. One of them is Genlock and one of them is timecode. Genlock comes up a lot. And when you look online, uh, or you read uh, discussions, people talk about having genlocked cameras and having a reference input, and those cameras are maybe $6,000. At the right time, sure, that would be a great idea, but uh, I just wanted to see if I could get this camera like into Unreal uh, and through the compositor. So a few notes. One, I'm not using end display. End display is where I think genlock really comes into uh, being important because you have to synchronize the shutter of your camera with uh, Unreal and the end display, uh, uh, the end display render machines. So I'm not doing that. I'm using a green screen. I'm just rendering things out in the compositor, and uh, I'm even recording things in Take Recorder. So I could actually go back after the fact and re-render out the scenes if I want to. But um, I just want to explain how I actually got all this working because you might be interested, and who knows what you're up to. So. Uh, I made these slides, and I'm going to share the link to this slide deck in the video, so you can just look at it and see exactly how I uh, created this. But uh, the first step is you need these four elements. So you need the Blackmagic camera, which I've got right here, you know, lens of your choice. The other thing you're going to need is this DeckLink Pro. Uh, now, I got the 8K Pro because it was, I think it was like 150 more dollars from up from this. Uh, from the 1080p version. Uh, so this comes with four inputs, four 8K, uh, I guess 8K inputs. It, it's 12G, 12G SDI is really what you need to know. Now, this is perfect. If you hook this up to a professional camera, great. You get your time code, uh, you can gen lock on this reference input, do whatever you want. But this doesn't have SDI out. However, it does output time code. And, but it's in eight, it's over HDMI. Now I've tried to look into exactly what the specification is for this. I think what's happening is uh, they embed the time code in an HDMI audio channel. So that's uh, LTC, like the linear time code format. Now, this is the piece of magic that kind of tied it all together. Here's the box. This is the uh, micro converter HDMI to 3G, uh, 3G SDI. And this goes from the Blackmagic to the deck link. I've got a diagram of it here. And uh, so you need one HDMI cable and one uh, SDI cable. And then that, that, in terms of equipment, that's it. It's, it's going. Now there's an important note, and I left it at the end of the slides. Um, I got this from B&H, and, &H and I, put a, I put a link there. Apparently there are some versions of this that don't actually uh, transcode the time code or whatever you call it. And uh, I, I, I looked at some on Amazon that didn't appear to do it. So the, everything else looked identical though. So you have to make sure you get the one that says it does time code and it even says time code on the box right there. Or here, let me, oh, you believe me, but here, time code right there. Um, and then a couple other things worth mentioning is you might want to like see what camera settings I have. So I've, I'm just recording on Blackmagic RAW, uh, 4K, you know, like the high, like the highest, res the highest format or whatever. Um, and then here, 24 frames per second uh, in film log. Uh, and then over here on the monitor, so the HDMI, I, I, yeah, I ticked clean feed because the uh, you want a clean feed coming out of here because that's what's going into Unreal. Um, and then uh, I, I didn't, yeah, 
So you want a clean feed because that's what's going into Unreal. Then, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, oh, I turned off timecode drop frame. Uh, image stabilization is off. I think you want image stabilization off for the, the motion sensor. And then, you know, those are the main bits. If you're interested in uh, purchasing exactly what I got, it's right there. It's no affiliate links. I don't have any of that. So you can just click on it. Uh, but I would only advise caution on this, uh, the micro converter. And I'm not saying that's the only place you can get it. I'm just saying I know that one works. So let's, I'm gonna hook this camera up and I have my, 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 uh, my equipment right over there. So I'm gonna go hook it up and then I'm gonna open Unreal and take you through exactly what to do. So I've got the camera running exactly as it shows in this diagram. Um, and I've got the settings set up in the same way that they are in uh, the, the panels on the left here. So we're gonna open a new Unreal. And if you haven't seen any other videos, I always like to start with a from scratch Unreal because I find that when I watch other people's videos, there's often times where they might have made an assumption about how they're setting something up and I just missed it, I don't know why. And that can burn a lot of hours. So I kind of like going through things slower. I don't, I don't really rush anything. And you know, sometimes I still make mistakes. So I always do, uh, going back, so I always do a blank film project because this actually has a few plugins that are already enabled, which is nice. Um, and then let's call this time code Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. I uh, hope this works. You know, I get this error sometimes uh, and it actually, like if I just rerun it, couple times. All right, so we have Unreal booting. I'm going to close this. And uh, you might look over here and see default timecode provider. And if you, if you are like, oh, I don't see those panels on mine, they're just under window developer tools. And I turned on um, timecode provider and this last one here, genlock. I turned those both on and I docked them to the corner. So these are both, uh, should, get, should be working by the end of it. Uh, so th this says the timecode provider provided by Unreal. So even though this is showing timecode, it doesn't match what's coming out of the camera. So one thing I've started doing uh, just in this demo is I invert the Blackmagic timecode by 12 hours so that it's, it, you can tell whether you're getting the Unreal one or the Blackmagic one. The Blackmagic one will just say 5 a.m. Uh, okay, so what do we need to do? A little cleanup. And then uh, first thing, let's just get the Blackmagic, let's like see if we can get the video in. So I like to go to media and media bundle, media bundle, Blackmagic pocket cinema camera. It just kind of handles it. I don't know what it's doing, uh, but under media source, I'm gonna click Blackmagic media source. Now you couldn't click this unless you had like one of the supported deck link cards. In the past, I was using uh, stream media source or something like that, or even file, but this is nice. So you can open it up and you have to configure a few things. Remember there's four uh, IO ports on here. So you just have to say which one, and this is important. And if you're even off by a little bit, uh, nothing shows up. So th this is a good place to debug if you think something's wrong. Uh, this has to match everything exactly. So as you saw, I'm at, um, okay. I know in the camera, I was using 4k DCI progressive at 24 frames per second. Here's the big limitation of the pocket cinema camera. It only outputs 1080p, uh, over the HDMI cable. So, um, you know, that will be okay because I intend to record in the camera, record in Unreal, and then match it all up later. And I'm still going to benefit from timecode and genlock. Um, if you were live compositing and live recording everything and you wanted to do it at 4K, where you get the composited like output image and you save that and send it straight to the editor, then you probably need to invest in a more expensive camera. All right, apply. And then, uh, so this is the first trick. I didn't need to set anything here because 
it's another spot that I actually set the time code. So I'm just gonna leave this time code one as blank. Um, any other things worth noting? Uh, so this would be if Unreal is generating the time code and the black magic is listening for it, but that's not what's happening. The black magic's internal clock is our master clock and we're synchronizing Unreal to that master clock. Uh, I think everything else is okay. Um, you know, if you were, the, the, this is the lens warping, which you would probably want to look at if you were, uh, if you were, you know, doing, like that's another thing to look at. All right, so let's just drag it on to our scene and this should be us. Let me uh, scale it up. Oop. I'm so bad at clicking these things. All right, there we are. So uh, I would say the latency is really good. Uh, I think I measured it at two frames. So I recorded the, the time code coming in here and the time code coming off the camera, like in the same shot, and I was two frames off. So for this, it's very, it's very quick. All right, um, but this isn't the time code of the camera. So the video is here, the time code is not here. Uh, let's do that next. So if you were to go to project settings and type time code, you would see uh, this time code provider none. And you might think, oh, I'll pick black magic. Here's the problem. You click it and it's just using like the built-in black magic class, like nothing got created here. So I don't have a chance to configure it. Um, what you can do or what you need to do then, I'm gonna leave that, it won't, it will, yeah, it's gonna give me an error. And if you look at the logs, it's like, I don't know what to do with this. We need to create a blueprint. Uh, so instead of any of these, we're gonna go black magic custom time provider. So there's two black magic classes here and we're gonna use both of them. But the first one is the time code provider. So black magic custom time code provider or it should be black magic pocket cinema camera custom time code provider. All right, all you need is this stuff in the corner and uh, where are you reading time code from? I'm reading it from the, the, the same input as my video, same settings, and the time code format is this VITC format. So uh, if it's coming in over SDI, I think it's gonna be this VITC. And then I'm gonna take off use genlock to count. Now there will be an opportunity to turn that on again later. But uh, if we leave it on, actually, let's look at the default. I'll reinitialize the time code. Nothing works. Uh, oh, because I haven't yet set that as my, my time code provider. I've made this mistake. Make sure you don't make it. There it is. Black magic custom time code provider. And okay, bets, yes or no. Will it be working? I say yes. There we go. Um, maybe this doesn't matter. Hmm. All right. Well, I'll just leave it. Uh, so you can see here, it's got black magic custom time code provider as like the source. Here's the time code and notice that it's now saying 5 AM, which is what I set the black magic camera to. So that is in fact pulling the time code from the black magic now. And if I were to go to take recorder, you can see that any takes that I record and render out with this will have the correct time code. I'll probably do that in another video, but let's for this one also see if we can get Genlock working. Now, a point of clarity, Genlock is this like very specific thing uh, about like tri-band black pulses or something like that often use uh, like another term I've seen is like a reference input. Some places put time code and gen lock together. It gets complicated. I had no idea. Like I was so lost as to what, what my camera could do, what Unreal can do, what I needed to do. Um, but I want to clarify. So in Unreal, it's not really gen lock. It's actually something else. It's called a uh, time step, custom time step. And this is what we're gonna customize as well. So the custom time step is just saying when Unreal should render the next frame. And what you really want 
it is unreal to render a frame exactly when you have a frame from the camera. Um, so if I go to here and I go new blueprint again, uh, time, uh, black magic, custom time step. So instead of using the provider, now I'm subclassing this other one. Black, black magic pocket cinema camera custom time step. There's no like bad acronyms in there, right? Okay. And uh, also you just go into here. It's the same, it's the same trick three times in a row. That's it. Well, almost. I have to set that as the custom time step. Boom. So there you have it. Uh, time code and gen lock or custom time step using a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, uh, the DeckLink Pro, and the microconverter. I hope this is useful to everyone else. Uh, hopefully in the future, I'm going to do an example with using this in the compositor. I just didn't have time to set up my green screen today. Uh, and, and then I want to actually like get things into take recorder, into the sequencer, and then render out with movie render queue, pull it all together again at the very end. Hopefully, uh, yeah, I'll share the process with you along the way. Hope this was valuable.